this story is something I really didn't want to talk about for so many years. My family knows parts of it, but not everything. But lately, I've been feeling the need to get it out as it approaches the 10-year anniversary of the incidents following. Maybe this is my, well, I don't want to say closure, because that won't likely come as long as I'm alive. It's more about trying to get this heavy weight off my shoulders. But before I get started, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below. It really does help my channel. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get started. Reality, it's a funny word, isn't it? What is reality? The experiences we have, the environment we interact with. Is my reality the same as yours? To a person who's colorblind, the colors they see are their reality. Yet for someone who isn't colorblind, that person is wrong because it goes against their own reality. A person with hearing damage and hears a loud ringing that's their reality. But to someone with perfect hearing, that ringing doesn't exist in their reality. So I ask again, what is reality? Especially when two realities can exist simultaneously. Sure, these are subtleties that I explained above, but what about separate realities existing at the same time in the same space on a much grander scale? A reality where 9-11 never happened. A reality where you never had children. Sounds far-fetched, I know. But those realities exist, and I can see them. Even interact with them. And although some are pleasant, some are dark and terrifying. Not all realities are mimics of our own world. Some have strayed so far from the path that they aren't recognizable. And in some realities, you can even interact with those living in it. There's one reality in particular that made me question my own very existence. I had to cut myself off from this ability. It's something we all have the capability of doing. But should we? It all started in 2014 when I lost someone. My lost son whom I had been searching for for the better part of his life. Well, I found him, but it was too late. He had passed away about a month prior, took his own life. I'm not going to dwell on how it all came to this point, the guilt, the anger. Yeah, no, I don't want to talk about that. It hurts too much. I will say that I went into a deep depression I struggled to go an entire day without feeling myself slip further and further away from who I was. I had to remind myself that I did everything I could to find him, but the depression became too much. I'm not the type of person to contemplate suicide. I had four children to live for at the time. One would think I'm Catholic or something with that many kids, but I'm not. I've always struggled with religion, to be honest. So it was hard to jump in with both feet and start believing. But I could feel the darkness surrounding me. It was hard to even put my feet on the floor some days. It took me about a year before I realized I was losing myself in the sadness. That the little ones who counted on me were losing their father more and more every day. I wasn't mean to them, just not really there. Self-pity was crippling me, and I had to do something about it. I couldn't remain in the mire anymore. I had lost my job and had no money nor insurance to seek therapy, so I started looking for alternative methods of healing, which led me to methods of meditation, which led to other things. Things that made me realize there are things that we can't see, things we aren't meant to see. Or maybe we are. I started learning to focus my breath. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Slow and rhythmic. Filling my body with oxygen. Breathing seems simple. It's an involuntary action that we take for granted. We don't really think about it. We just do it. 
But when I focused on it, I realized we go about our day-to-day lives without actually giving our bodies what they need. So, I focused. Just on my breath at first, or at least I tried. Thoughts would constantly invade my mind and try to take me away from it. I pulled myself back into where I needed to focus. Just breathe. It took some time to master this. Uh, I wouldn't really say I mastered it. It became more routine and habit after a while. Laying silently on my bed with my arms at my sides, just breathing with my eyes shut. Then I started learning how to actually use that breath to relax. Not like sitting in front of a TV thinking I was relaxed. We don't really ever relax anymore unless we're asleep. One of the consequences of being worker bees, I guess. I focused on my breath and where that oxygen was going throughout my body, starting with my toes. Yes, you never realize how tense even your toes are. Up through my legs, I focused on those muscles relaxing. That was a hard one for me with restless leg syndrome and all, but it actually helped my condition. Through my torso, I felt my body sink into the bed through my arms and into my fingertips. So many tense muscles there I never even noticed. Into my neck and my jaw muscles, my head sank into my pillow. I continued focusing on my breathing and relaxed every muscle in my body. Thoughts still crept in, but it was getting easier to push them out. I could feel my cheeks sliding to the sides with gravity pulling them. I'm not an impatient person. I knew finding myself again would take a while, but I was already starting to feel like I was on the right path just after a couple of weeks of doing this. It was amazing. Yes, I was still hurting over the loss of my son, but this was helping me cope. I started becoming addicted to it, craving it in the most awkward places. I'd close my eyes in a cafe and focus on breathing. I'd hurry home to focus on relaxing my muscles. I studied these techniques over and over, looking for new things to incorporate into my meditation. Then I discovered binaural beats, sounds at certain wavelengths and frequencies that had the power to enhance meditation. So I started incorporating some of these into my meditations, putting headphones on and silently drifting away. It was peaceful harmonious even. I had heard of the human body operating at certain wavelengths and vibrations. Well, they say everything has a natural vibration. People, trees, even rocks. I thought it sounded silly at the time, but I liked the way the binaural beats made me feel. I thought I would try different frequencies and test the vibration theory. Maybe I wasn't fully relaxed at first, but after a week or so, I felt it. I could feel the vibration of my body, and depending on the beat I was listening to, it would change how fast I would vibrate. It wasn't like the vibration from an earthquake, more like something internal, like I was just shaking under my skin. I won't lie, it freaked me out a little. How could this be possible? Everything we have ever been taught about biology and anatomy in school, there was nothing about this. As amazing as this discovery was for me, I also feared it, craved it, and feared it at the same time. I started researching a little more into what these vibrations could do. Were there any side effects, ramifications, and from everything I read, they were natural, and there's nothing to fear. So I started doing this every night at bedtime. I've never been one to meditate sitting upright. It was just so hard to relax with a stiff back. Laying down always worked best. So, laying in bed, I would put on my headphones and focus on things I had learned. Pushing out thoughts that had nothing to do with what I was trying to achieve. But I was still horribly sad. It wasn't taking that away. It was just making it a bit easier to deal with. I didn't want to forget my son. 
I just wanted to get through life without being useless to my other kids. They needed me, and I needed them. But when researching vibrations, I learned that these can actually cause out-of-body experiences. Thought it sounded like a bunch of hooey. Stuff that Ozzy Osbourne sang about, but no one really took seriously. Some mind-bending Alfred Hitchcock story or something for the Twilight Zone. Not me. Not real. So I laughed it off and continued my harmless meditations. Nine times out of ten, I would fall asleep just as the vibrations got stronger. I guess that's one of the issues with trying to meditate while lying down. Don't fault me. Try being relaxed for prolonged periods without dozing off. But about two to three weeks into this routine, something happened. I fell asleep, but I was wide awake. I don't know how else to explain it. I don't even know if it was real or at least I didn't at the time. It was like a dream. A wonderful dream. I saw my son. He stood in front of me as I lay on my bed relaxed. A small light shining on his face from who knows where. All my lights were off. He didn't speak. He just smiled. And I got this feeling that he'd been looking for me for all these years as well. I cried. I could feel the tears running from my eyes and onto my pillow. Yet I was asleep, wasn't I? I couldn't be. He was in front of me plain as day. So I sat up and reached out my hand to touch his face. He leaned into my hand, and as soon as we made contact, he was gone. I felt at peace. I cried a bit more. I didn't know what just happened, but I wasn't going to question it either. I was sure I was just dreaming. Sat on the edge of my bed, hoping he would reappear. There was so much I needed to tell him, but after a few minutes, I left it alone. I turned to lay back in my bed and noticed something. Noticed nothing. I, I saw it with hard distinction. I was already laying down and I was looking at my body. I saw my face, my arms, my legs, the tears running off my face onto my pillow. Yeah, I had to be dreaming. Funny things, those dreams. They can feel so real. So I played along. I laid back down into my body and went to sleep. The next morning I woke up and remembered every detail about the dream. Not like other dreams where you forget everything as the day goes on. I remembered it all for the entire day. And it haunted me. Not in a creepy way. It was just there in the front of my mind. I still felt a sense of peace, but was curious why this was so real feeling. So I decided to try it again that night. I laid in my usual position on my back, concentrated on my breathing, relaxing every muscle in my body, and just felt the beats enter my ears, penetrating every fiber of my physical form. I felt the vibration, then it intensified but nothing happened. So in my frustration, I rolled over and climbed out of bed, only to look down and see me still laying in the bed. My room looked normal. It wasn't like you see in the movies where everything is, well, different, dark. It was normal. But here I was looking down at myself. I could see my headphones still on and my body breathing as if it were on autopilot. It freaked me out a bit. I, I would have thought I'd died if it weren't for my body still breathing beneath me. What's happening here? Originally, I never intended to have some sort of profound out-of-body experience, and I wasn't even sure that's what this was. But as long as I was in control of this dream, I figured I'd have fun with it. I put my feet one in front of the other and walked out of my bedroom but it was strange to say the least I couldn't feel the floor beneath my feet it was like I was walking and floating 
still mentally attached to the physical world without actually being a part of it. I tried touching some items throughout my apartment, but it was no use. Then, suddenly, I snapped awake in my bed. I felt rested and exhausted at the same time. My body was rested, but I was mentally drained. At this time, my son wasn't there. It made me a bit sad. The next night, I did it again. This time, I needed to focus a bit more. But the more I focused, or thought I was focusing, the worse the results. I ended up just laying in bed, allowing thoughts to enter my head, not really focusing like I had before. I mean, how can anyone focus after having such vivid dreams, or being a bit freaked out over them? Maybe freaked out's the wrong word. It's more like feeling a little creeped out, disturbed, yet intrigued. I wanted it to happen so bad that I was focusing on it too much, where I should have been focusing on just being in the moment. I was thinking of the possibilities, seeing my son again, giving him closure, giving myself closure, but that isn't how it works. I fell asleep with an empty feeling. That night I had a dream that told me what I had done wrong. Yeah, I was focused on the wrong things. Dreaming's a weird thing. Sometimes it seems so real that you can actually reach out and touch everything. You can sometimes question if that's our true reality and what we perceive as reality is the real dream. Just sometimes. What happened to me? I used to be logical. I didn't believe in some mumbo jumbo. What existed right in front of me and that's all there was. But now science is starting to justify my switch. Does that make it acceptable? Or am I just trying to justify this new train of thought? Whatever it was, I still had moments of doubt. Fun to play around with. And if it left me with some peace of mind, what harm was it? Well, just because we can, doesn't mean we should. It took me a few weeks to jump back into it. Well, it took me a few weeks to try to progress beyond meditation. I was still meditating about an hour a day during that time. It relaxed me. I couldn't be upset about those kind of results. But then, then, the things started happening naturally. I'd feel my eyes opening without actually opening my eyes. I could see all around me. I know there are movies like Insidious that depict out-of-body experiences as being in the dark, total dark. Not even a lantern can light your surroundings. But that didn't happen in these first travels. Yeah, we'll call them travels for lack of a better word. I don't want to use some spooky or mystifying cliche to express it. It makes my mouth feel numb when I do that. So even though I was sticking to the confines of my apartment, I was still traveling. Outside of my body, of course. Restricted only by what I perceived as restrictions. Remember, this was just a journey to find peace, nothing more. But the more I allowed myself the freedom, the more I understood what I could do. Still not totally convinced these weren't just dreams, I kept myself on a short tether. What if they weren't dreams? Would I get lost and never find myself again? Sounds too much like insidious, but these are real thoughts, especially after watching those movies. Short little travels out, of, out to my living room, seeing everything the way I had left it before laying down that night. Then I'd snap back to my body, wake up for a short period with a calm feeling, then it was lights out. I did this for about three to four months, it, but it progressed. I'd step outside of my apartment, or at least think I was stepping, more like trying to walk on the bottom of a swimming pool. You're not really touching the ground, but all this time, I never saw my son, not since the first time. And the first time was purely accidental on my part. Maybe it was meant to be my closure at that point. 
Maybe I was meant to see past my grief and just understand there's more to, well, life than fixating on those who were no longer around. Whatever it was, I felt like my son was at peace and I really didn't want to hurt that. I had this overwhelming sense that the more we disturb those trying to move on, the more we slow them down. Yes, I still hurt over the loss, but I was understanding how selfish grief was at the time. And who says this wasn't all just a dream anyway? As these dreams progressed, I got more and more comfortable with them. Traveling was becoming something of an adventure, much like a baby discovering their toes for the first time. I'm not saying it happened every time I meditated, but it was becoming more frequent. I didn't notice subtle changes in my environment when I was in this state. A light flickering or completely out. Street lamps. Not the way I saw them when I was awake. Not bad, just not bright. Sure, light was coming from them, but they weren't illuminating their surroundings the way they should. Yet I could still see clearly. I didn't even need my glasses. If people would walk by, I'd try to say hello, just to see if they could see or hear me. But nothing. No response. I was completely invisible to them. Fine with me. I'd rather not have to interact anyway. Sometimes I could see them shiver, as if a cold chill was hitting their necks. Then something amazing happened. One night I looked up at the sky and I could see every star in the sky. The Milky Way galaxy, all the constellations, brighter and clearer than ever. I looked down at my feet and I was hovering about 50 feet above the ground. I'm afraid of heights, but this, it didn't bother me. I was looking down at my neighborhood. It felt so free. Why didn't everyone know about this? Wait, everyone does dream. And most people dream of flying. Those were my thoughts, at least. So, I flew around a bit. Not far. Still within sight of my apartment building. This was the most adventurous I had been so far. And it was amazing. Until I saw it. Not everything in this dream is pleasant. And I was discovering that rather quickly. Apparently, my dreams are not as peaceful as I had thought. A dark cloud or mist hovering in front of me and above me. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if these are words that can describe it. It didn't have any features other than putting off a feeling of hate. It hated me. As if some dark border I wasn't supposed to approach. If I could feel anything in this dream state, it was cold deep cold on a summer night. If I had skin, physical skin, it felt like frost would form on it. Then, the black grew. Everything turned black. No lights. I couldn't see my apartment building. I couldn't see the ground. No stars. Just suspended in blackness. As if it was growing impatient with waiting for me to enter it, it just expanded around me. Without being able to feel gravity, it was almost impossible to tell which way was up and which way I needed to go to get back on the ground of my apartment. I started to panic. I knew that I had not moved, not on my own at least, and the ground should be where my feet were pointing. So I headed that way. Not that I was a master of flight or anything, but fear is a heck of a motivator. All around me, almost suffocating me. Anger, loss, pain. I could feel it in every part of my energy. I didn't like this dream anymore. The saying goes, if you know you're dreaming, then you may not be. At least I think I read that somewhere. I kept telling myself to wake up, wake up, wake up. But nothing. I was stuck here. Stuck in this grief-filled void, and I thought maybe my own grief was adding to it all. 
This seemed like the kind of place where sadness collected. There was no sound. I tried to speak, but nothing came out. It was like being stuck in absolute silence. I tried to float my way around. Maybe there would be some kind of light or something that would be a sort of beacon to guide me out of this. But there was no way of telling if I was moving. There was no airflow and no landscape nor features to tell me I was heading in any direction. As far as I knew, I wasn't moving at all. Or maybe I was shooting up through the heavens like a comet. There was no way to know. I sank further into my own sadness. This time it was for me. What had I done? My own selfish emotions caused this. I tried to cry out for whatever this was to please let me go. Pleading like a man at the wrong end of a gun. I had other children to return to. Children that would need me. I tried to get all of this out of my mouth, but there was no sound. It was as if this void was stopping any sound from emitting. The more I pleaded with no result, the more the fear turned to anger, hostility. There was nothing I could do with it though. I mean, who or what would I direct it toward other than myself, even if I could make a sound? But as I begged silently, I felt something. Another presence? Something different. Something with, I don't know, a consciousness? The corner of my eye caught movement. I snapped my head around and saw something in the distance. Not a light, but a figure darker than the void that surrounded me. I didn't know that was possible. This figure was like nothing I had seen in this dream. It was dark, with no discernible features. None that I could tell from that distance, at least. It drew closer, coming straight for me. The closer it came, the more I could feel its emotion. Anger. Destitute. Confusion. It got close enough that I could make out its gray face. Twisted. Contorted. Unmoving and unchanging. The rest of its body was just black. Darker than any blackness I had ever known. It cocked its head as if to look at me like, What are you doing here? I felt those thoughts reverberating throughout my head, and they weren't in my own voice, more of something non-human. What are you doing here? It hadn't moved its mouth even, nor changed its disturbing expression, but I felt it already knew the answer to its own question. It gazed at me, just staring into me. It got closer, right in my face, looking my face over, moving its head around mine, just studying me. If it had breath, I'm sure I could feel it, taste it, but there was nothing. The void around us was still and deathly silent, and it knew I was afraid more afraid than I had ever been, or rather, more than I knew was even possible. But it showed no emotion, just curiosity. The black mist that made up its body expanded, wrapped around my own body, pulling me into it slowly. It gave me another curious look, its gray face even closer to mine, head still cocked to the side, as I tried to scream, but nothing came out. I should have known this tactic was useless, but it was more of an instinctual response rather than a conscious thought. Conscious? Was I conscious? Felt like it. As scary as it was, I was aware of everything, not like a fuzzy dream. This whole journey had been as clear as anything I could experience with my eyes open in my room. Its body engulfed me completely. I struggled to get out, but it would expand and contract with my movements. No matter how far I reached, it grew with me, containing me in its black, formless body, imprisoning me. As black as this thing was, I could still see through it, like looking from the inside of a tinted window, or 
more like black lace. I could see pieces of it blowing around us, tapering, drifting as if it were gliding on a slow wind. What was this thing? An entity? No, it can't be. It felt more like being stuck in a silent room, but knowing there is something electronic on. This thing was pure energy. Not electricity. Just, I don't know how to explain it. Energy. Like the reverse of a child's energy. Calm, but present, yet sentient. I saw a landscape forming below us. I hadn't known we were even moving, but this wasn't any scenery I was familiar with. It was dark, no color, bleak. The ground came closer and I could see movement below. Slow movement, and a lot of it. Another form of black mist energy whooshed past us from behind, heading for the surface, disappearing into the dark, moving landscape below. I fought harder to remove myself from the confines of this thing, but it was still of no use. It took me closer to the surface. A world of despair emerged beneath me, bare trees with bark like coal. The trees were shaking, vibrating, the ground a dark soil. The structures around were hollow, broken. It took me to the ground and released me. I would have stumbled if my feet actually touched the ground. It faced me with the same contorted, curious look. I felt more words echo in my head. Is, Is this where you want to be? My eyes grew wider. It was trying to show me something. I looked around and from the nooks and crannies of the landscape crawled out people. Not like the people we encounter in the real world. They were out of focus, vibrating just as the trees. I felt them, hollow, sad, just as hollow as the buildings around, crying silently as they approached me, lumbering towards me, I could feel their pain, the trees vibrating around us like a glitchy horror movie. To say I was afraid was an understatement, but I felt my grief, it was returning, or maybe I had just suppressed it. The thoughts of losing my son replayed over and over in my mind. Then everything stopped around me. Aside from the being, it was like time had stopped itself. The black mist peered into me again, head cocked. This is where you are headed. Then it hit me. This was a place where those who can't let go end up. Was this thing trying to dump me in this landscape of loss? Did I really deserve to be there? This wasn't to be my eternity, I thought. It heard my inner voice. My thoughts ran back to when I first saw my son in that damn dream. It was a peaceful moment. I asked myself why I wasn't content with that. I looked at this being, still unable to speak. It knew what I was thinking. It saw me resign myself to the fact that my grief would cause me more suffering and suffering for those closest to me. Its face got stern. You still only think of yourself. Suddenly, it left, shooting up into the sky and fading into the blackness above, abandoning me in this awful place. At first, I was too afraid to move from the spot I was left in. But as the dark figure disappeared, the beings around me began moving again, closer, sensing I was not so much different from them. No words were spoken, and every sound of the vibrating trees reverberated an echo and a slight buzzing sound. As frightening as this place was, at least it had some landscape to try to get some bearing. I preferred it to the black void above. If I'm completely honest, I preferred being back in my bed, but it didn't look like that was an option. So, taking flight was only to be a last resort. I could feel the oppression of the sadness all around me. I began running away from the lost souls surrounding me. Sad, long faces passing quickly as I brushed past them. I could feel them begging me for something. 
but I wasn't about to stick around to find out what. As the dark colorless scenery whisked past me, I noticed something. This place was familiar. This was my neighborhood. Albeit in ruin, I could see my apartment building peeking out from a corner. The Victorian-style homes turned into multifamily apartments either in a colorless fire or just brought to rubble. As I turned the corner, my apartment building had suffered a similar fate. Black, charred, walls collapsed. My apartment bore open for this crazy world to see into. All around the torn neighborhood, I could see more of those black mists swooping in and dropping more souls into this destitute landscape. I looked up and could see them dropping in the distance, disappearing behind the torn city around me, then shooting into the sky again with out there encapsulated victims. If I could get into my apartment, I felt there was a chance that I could get back to my body and wake up from this hell, this limbo, this twisted reality, a bastardized version of the beautiful world I had ventured away from. I climbed the stoop to my apartment. Climbed. Why do I keep thinking I was actually touching the ground? I went up the stoop to the missing security door to my apartment building. As soon as I crossed the threshold, everything was normal. I was back in my neighborhood. The stairwell to my apartment building. My head spun and my stomach got weak. I leaned over the banister, my eyes struggling to focus, then darkness as I collapsed on the stairs. My hand tangled into the slats of the banister and I could feel my wrist almost snap. As hard as I tried, I couldn't fight it. The next thing I knew, one of my neighbors was standing over me, checking my pulse as my eyes opened. Shaking, afraid, the younger man didn't seem phased by my obvious awkward state. He sat next to me on the step, looked at me with a cocked head. Is this where you want to be? I shuffled backward up the stairs and clumsily hurried to my feet, never breaking eye contact with the neighbor. I burst into my apartment and locked the door behind me. I pressed my back against the door and slid down to the floor, trying my best to understand what was happening. I crawled on my knees to my bed. It was empty. Somehow, I had never left my body. I never saw that neighbor again, and when I think about it, he had moved in just after I had learned of my son's death. After that moment, I did my best to stop grieving for his loss. Something had changed with me. I was now living for the happiness of those around me, not taking any moment with them for granted. I continued to meditate for another year, but instead of focusing on my own pain, I focused on bettering myself and being truly happy, realizing that one day I would see my son again, but not before it was time. When I would meditate, I would go to other places after that, other realities, not like the one I had visited the first time, beautiful places, places where things were different, but the world was the same but none of them fulfilled me the way that first night had. As terrifying as that experience was, I was grateful for the lesson. I stopped meditating in that way. It started confusing me as to what was my true reality. <laughs>